see reaches we're just off of live sands but well, we have seen some seals just off of sands you can see more it's a more regular occurrence now and further up river is more of a surprise as well like I say Wandsworth I've, I've seen a seal as far up as Wandsworth and porpoises as well seeing them maybe at Gray's Ends even so what we're doing today is we've got some PLA staff coming out on an ecology walk um, being supported by the Environment Agency that you can see behind me doing their fishery surveys. The idea is to show staff what lives in the Thames to better manage it in the future. Um, today they've caught um, two nets and they've caught various species of fish, things like bream, a couple of eels, some bass, um, which has given us a good picture of what lives in the Thames and what's actually using the Thames at this point in time in the summer. So in order to help how um, the rivers manage and the, uh, the fish and the habitat that they have, we will uh, encourage developers to look at um, fish-friendly designs, so things like green walls, putting terraces in front of um, their uh, block of flats, so giving them more habitat instead of just foreshore. We have uh, reeded areas as well, which is really good for the habitat for the fish. Well, I found out that there's the most extraordinary life in a river that looks as if it shouldn't be able to support life. We've seen uh, loads of eels and we've seen dace and bream and flounders and things like that. And it's, for me, utterly fascinating as to uh, that there, there, there's a different world of life underneath that, uh, underneath that, uh, that surface over there. We've got eight passive debris collectors on the river, strategically located between Wandsworth and Greenwich. The PDCs are just one part of our waste collection. As far as possible, we recycle as much as we can. Um, so things like wood, tyres, metal, um, all the obvious recyclable elements will get, get taken out. Um, what can't be recycled goes to uh, landfill. An awful lot of plastic bottles come out of the river now. The craft all called driftwood, but in all fairness, they, they should really be called the plastic bottle because that's the biggest thing. That we're, the, the, the greatest amount of rubbish we collect from the river is plastic. The, there's no legal requirement for us to keep the river free of rubbish. Um, we, we like to keep it free of debris because obviously that has a, a, can have a navigational impact on, on vessels, um, but it's we view it as part of the whole steward, stewardship um, of the river. Port of London Authority, funny enough, have finished up with this farmland because they, in 1920 there was a demand to see an oil return, uh, refinery on the south side of the river which matches the refineries that are located on the north side of the river. Um, however, uh, the people who were looking to operate the uh, site uh, failed to actually implement that particular use and therefore the PLA then had to seek how they're going to use the farms in a productive and, and managed way. What is particularly interesting about this particular site is the fact that it does have this particular status, it's already a triple SI, it's a special uh, protection area but it's also a Ramsar, Ramsar site now this means that the PLA have to manage it in a certain way, but without the partnership of the farmers and their, their, their enthusiasm and embracing this particular process, it couldn't take place. We don't use any chemicals, um, no fertilizer, so it's total natural grassland. Um, the, the areas are kept wetter through the winter and draw down through the summer to encourage lapwing and red shank to nest 
and it's all done, the whole farming system is done to try and encourage wildlife to thrive as well as the farm. We're at All Hallows Marsh uh, in Kent on the south bank of the Thames and um, All Hallows is part of the greater complex of the Thames uh, which is internationally important for wildlife. It's one of the uh, five or six most important sites in the UK for overwintering water birds, birds like geese, uh, ducks and wading birds such as lapwings and redshanks. Well we have a long-term partnership with the Port of London Authority. Of course the Thames is an internationally important commercial waterway uh, as well as being internationally important for birds and other wildlife. So over many years we've worked closely with the Port of London uh, to try to find ways of meshing those two things together um, and finding ways in which the uh, commerce and industrial activity of the Thames is consistent with its importance for wildlife. The barrier actually fulfils a fairly simple concept of stopping the tide going into central London. How we do that is a bit more complicated, but effectively we do stop the river. We need the barrier because central London has been under threat of flooding for hundreds of years, and it was realised after the 1953 floods that something had to be done. And so in 1966 there was a recommendation to put a structure here uh, uh, at Charlton, and construction began in 1974 to produce the Thames Barrier. We'll have an operational working relationship because the PLA is responsible for navigation through the barrier and we're responsible for the operation of the barrier. So there'll be a programme of gate closures, either the full barrier or individual gates, and our two control rooms will liaise between us to make sure that uh, navigation can continue safely when we're doing what we need to do. A lot of berths on the river are quite close together, so you, you can see that the ship's going to get to the berths at the same time. Um, for instance, there's two um, aggregate berths just above the barrier, so if we saw two dredgers coming in for those berths at the same time, we would want to put a bit of a space between them so they didn't arrive at the barrier at the same time. So there's a lot of rubbish that makes its way onto the foreshore. The Thames is a huge city river, loads of things go into it, and it's no one's job to take it out. So we work with volunteers to get rid of the rubbish we find on the foreshore, the plastic bags, you know, chopping trolleys, all those kinds of things. So we've got a, a whole group of people who are getting stuck in, to making a real difference for London. So the Port of London Authority do something that's essential to make these events work, and they help us get rid of the rubbish. You can imagine we've got 20 or 30 volunteers lugging bin bags of rubbish around on the foreshore in the mud, if we had to take that up a ramp off the foreshore into a skip or find a kind of commercial route to get that away, that adds a whole lot extra layer of effort and work to the volunteers. This makes it straightforward. to take samples of the riverbed to see a what the material is down there whether it's mud sand or gravel and also whether there are any pollutants in the sediment the river is much cleaner now than it used to be but pollutants can still be locked away in the the, the mud and the sand of the riverbed it's important for us to see whether when we need to dredge these areas what uh, techniques are appropriate um, where the material can go to We've uh, subsampled it into the, the jar and that jar uh, goes into the cool box and gets sent off to a laboratory uh, and then we'll get the results in a couple of weeks. In order to measure the depth of water in the river and the estuary, we uh, obviously can't see the bottom, so we have to use uh, sound. So uh, similar to sonar on submarines, um, we use that to, to measure the, the depth of the water. The river has had a long history of changes uh, with the sandbanks and the estuary particularly they do move uh, and so we need to monitor the depths in the channels uh, to make sure that ships can safely navigate into the port.
it's very important. The work that the PLA has done on the stonework around the outside of the island, um, without it, the island would wash away. And therefore, it would provide no habitat for the snails, no habitat for birds. Well, for the trees around the stonework around the edges, we, we're trying to ensure that we don't get any more root growth and protrusion into the revetments because that disrupts the um, stability of the, um, the stonework around the revetments and uh, we would then be back to the situation where we'd have tidal erosion and we, we would start losing the stability of the, of the banks themselves. With regards to the trees on the island, um, we are here then to make sure that they are living safely and they're healthy because it's the root systems that hold the whole eight together. So the tree surgeon makes a visit once a year, twice a year, just to check to make sure that we have sufficiently stemmed their growth within the revetment. And today he's here to check that out and to actually apply some eco pellets to, main, to keep it stunted. I think we've got one of the best, most loveliest, uh, nicest rivers in the world. Um, and, and for me to have my hands on it, I've grown up on the River Thames as a, as a, as a constructor and now I've got the pleasure of actually maintaining what we've put in for everybody to enjoy and everybody likes everything to do with the living things.